This is a eukaryotic cell. You can tell because it's got a nucleus in the center. It's also got lots of membrane-bound organelles, such as mitochondria, lysosomes, Golgi body, endoplasmic reticulum. This is also a eukaryotic cell, but this is a plant cell. Um, again, you can tell it's a eukaryotic cell because it's got a nucleus. It's also got membrane-bound organelles such as chloroplasts, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum. This is a prokaryotic cell. There are no membrane-bound organelles inside the bacterium in this case. They've got a slightly different structure. Instead of their DNA being found inside a nucleus, they've got a loop of DNA, sometimes called a nucleoid, um, they've also got plasmids, which is just a little circle of DNA. They've also got they do have ribosomes, but they are smaller than they found in eukaryotic cells. Some have a slime capsule around the outside to protect them from things like your stomach acid or prevent bacteria from dehydrating and drying out in the soil. They've also got a cell wall, however, it's not made from cellulose, it's made from peptidoglycan or murrhein. And they, again, like a eukaryotic cell, they've got a plasma membrane. Some, not all, have a flagellum, a tail to help to help it swim, so sort of propel it through uh, liquid. We're now going to look at some electron micrographs. If you're doing A-level, you could be asked to identify structures using an electron micrograph. This is a plasma membrane that could surround a cell. It could also surround organelles such as mitochondria, chloroplasts, nuclei. You can tell it's a plasma membrane because you've got a double line here. So you've got your phospholipid bilayer. It's selectively permeable. It allows certain molecules through it allows lipid soluble molecules to pass directly through the bilayer. It prevents water soluble molecules from crossing the bilayer. They would need something like a protein channel to be able to move through. Here we can see a nucleus. The overall structure is a nucleus. Um, it's n Some people might confuse it with a cell, but it's actually a nucleus. You can tell because you've got a dark patch which is the nucleolus in the middle. Um, the Nucleolus is where ribosomal RNA is made, and ribosomes are made. The nuclear membrane has pores in it, which are too small to allow DNA through, but they allow mRNA to pass through, which can carry the code to make proteins. That will then travel to the ribosomes. The nucleus itself contains DNA, and that's the, the main function. This is a mitochondrion. You can tell it's a mitochondrion for a couple of reasons. One, the main one being, you can see these kind of folded lines. It's actually an extension of the inner membrane. It kind of folds up like this. These are the Christi. They provide a large surface area. You've also got a double membrane around the outside. You've got another envelope around the outside. The function of a mitochondrion is for the site of respiration, where respiration takes place. This releases energy. It does not create energy. That's a big mistake people make. Things to look out for, I said we've got the Christi, by the larger surface area, so you've got more enzymes embedded in the membrane which carry out respiration. You've also got the what looks like the cytoplasm of the mitochondria. It's actually called the matrix. This is where other reactions take place to uh, during respiration. You can't really see them on here but other adaptations of the mitochondrion it does have its own ribosomes in the matrix and it does have its own source of DNA which enables it to make its own enzymes to carry out respiration. You can see these lines here these are all connected together and they are membrane studded with ribosomes. This makes up the rough endoplasmic reticulum each of these ribosomes on the fundoplasmic reticulum will synthesize proteins that will make proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is a really hard structure to identify. You can see here we've got lots of membrane 
It's not very organised. That's one of the ways you can tell it apart from a Golgi body. Just got lots of membrane kind of folded over each other in no particular order. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum doesn't have any ribosomes, so there are no clear black dots to identify it. Its role is to synthesise carbohydrates and lipids. This is a Golgi apparatus. You can see it's quite different from the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. You've got clear stacks of membrane. So these stacks help to modify proteins by adding sugars. They also package, package proteins into these vesicles. And you often see circular vesicles surrounding the Golgi body. The proteins will be packaged inside these. The vesicles will then travel through the cytoplasm and transport the proteins throughout the cell. The lysosome is a type of vesicle that contains lytic enzymes. These enzymes can break down old organelles such as this mitochondrion so the, they have fused together. The lysosome membrane is fused with the mitochondrion membrane. Enzymes will then be released and start digesting the mitochondria, recycling the broken down material. Lysosomes can also be used to break down engulfed bacteria by phag that phagocytes have engulfed. Now this is a cell wall. Not all eukaryotic cells have a cell wall. Animal cells don't. Plant cells and yeast cells do. They're both eukaryotes as well. So a cell wall in a plant cell, this will be filled with long strands of cellulose which make it very strong make it able to withstand osmotic lysis so the cell can be turgid and swell without the cell membrane bursting. The cell wall won't burst. This is another uh, feature of eukaryotic cells but only in plant cells. We've got a chloroplast here. There's another one up here. The chloroplast has a number of adaptations which enables it to do its job. We've got lots of these stacks now these stacks are made from lots and lots of lines. Each individual line in a stack is called a thylakoid. The stack itself, each stack, are called granum. Each one's a granum, but collectively they're called grana. We've got intergranal membranes here connecting the grana together. Now the role of a chloroplast is to carry out photosynthesis. And within each of the grana, within each of the, the stacks, the thylakoids in the grana, You've got chlorophyll, which enables it to absorb light. The later reactions in photosynthesis take place in the stroma, which is like the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. So there are enzymes found inside the stroma, which enable the chloroplast to carry out the reaction photosynthesis and make glucose. Each of these little dark dots, they're not ribosomes, they're in fact starch grains. The starch grains enable the glucose which the chloroplast has made to be stored for later use. Again, you can't see it on this chloroplast, but like a mitochondrion, they do have their own ribosomes, they've got their own DNA, so they can make their own enzymes for the reactions of photosynthesis. It's important to know how organelles actually work together. They do, they do act cooperatively. They don't each work in their own right and not interact with each other at all. So this is an example of how a, of a protein, like a digestive enzyme, could be made and secreted by a cell. So first of all, the inside the, the nucleus, the DNA is copied into mRNA. So this, a section of DNA, which would be a gene to make the protein, is copied into mRNA. The mRNA can then travel through a nuclear pore, across the nuclear membrane, and it will then find a ribosome on rough endoplasmic reticulum. On the ribosome, the protein is synthesized. The synthesized protein is then packaged into a vesicle by the Golgi body. The vesicle can then travel through the cytoplasm until it reaches the cell surface membrane. The vesicle will fuse with the cell surface membrane and is then secreted from the cell.